The Devil's Advocates. Sausage making never looks so good. The Devil's Advocates on the Mike 92.1 and the Mike92.1.com. And we are back from the 420 break in breaking the law with the Solidarity Singers today. Ladies and gentlemen, please like our Facebook page, The Devil's Advocates Radio. Follow us on Twitter at Devil Radio. Give us a call. Let us know what you have to say. 608 321 0921. We did make a small bipartisan act today, though, Dominic. We did reach out to some of the state was state of Wisconsin legislative Republicans, including a very reasonable man, Dale Schultz, who in a bipartisan fashion, along with Tim Collins, has offered an alternative to the mining bill that we discussed on yesterday's show with Brett Halsey. We also reached out to Glenn Grothman, who has never been known to be anything <laughs> resembling bipartisan. But, you know, if 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 you're doing business with both sides, and that's what we're trying to do, you got to get them all. And finally, we went down to the, uh, the offices of the Wisconsin Supreme Court to meet with Patience Rogensack. She did not take our... <laughs> she, our was, she was not available. Uninvited interview request at her office, as that could be construed as a campaign conversation. They were, they were quick to hand out the campaign phone number to us. So we'll look forward to in extending another invitation to Patience Rogensack to discuss her Supreme Court candidacy here on the Devil's Advocate Show. But I can tell you, Harry Reid... You know, if we were breaking the law, Harry Reid was breaking my heart today, Dominic, because <laughs> he has lost the opportunity. Harry Reid has never in, you know, this guy has been an embarrassment as far as I'm concerned as a majority leader in the Senate because he really does not have any spine. Uh, when Republicans have the upper hand, Dominic, they go for the jugular. They will use any means necessary (laughs) to advance their agenda. And I'm not saying this is a bad thing. I'm saying this, that's reality, Dominic. When Scott Walker got control of Wisconsin and he had the Senate and he had the assembly, you better bet your sweet ass he was jamming through Republican legislation unapologetically. Do you think that's any different from what uh, President Obama has done? Yes, You don't buddy. think he's jamming through? You don't think he has the same philosophy as, as, as Walker does in that regard? We had discussion and conversation and town hall meetings about Obamacare for almost a year, Dominic. The yeah, but Wisconsin wasn't, wasn't that the bill that had to be passed before it could be read? I mean, are you telling me that we actually had discussions about the actual 2,000-some page bill, or was it just the philosophical conversations? Buddy, we had extensive, extensive hearings in Congress all over the place. Don't <laughs> tell me the year's time was not adequate time for conversation or discourse. I am sorry if Republicans offered amendments and then did not support the legislation to which their own amendments were attached, Dominic, to me that's obstructionism on behalf of the Republicans. Why? Because they play the political game. Why did Harry Reid choose to surrender the upper hand when there's finally, and only once every two years for one very long day, because it's been extended now for like 13 days, the first day of the senatorial session, why did we not at least force a talking filibuster, Dominic? If I don't want you to talk, I just talk more. <laughs> you have no problem doing that, Mike. Hey, let's uh, let's see if the uh, callers want to join us today as well. 321-0921, 321-0921. Your opportunity, Dom. The I floor think, is yours. I sir. think Reed did not go through with it because he realizes that at some point, the Democrats will be in the other position, in the minority position, and they're going to want to use the same tools that the Republicans are to stop the Republican agenda. I, I mean, I, that's the only possible reason I can think, because uh, based on all the, well, let me be frank about it, all the complaining and, and, and railing about this filibuster, the opportunity was there. So my, my point to this is, you know what, you can expect the same exact reaction when the Senates, the Democratic Senates are in the minority. They will use the filibuster to the same degree. Well, what I do not know, because this was brought forth as a deal, and the headline in the Washington Post this afternoon online is, Senator Majority Leader Harry Reid and Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell have come to a deal on filibuster reform. 
The deal is this. The filibuster will not be reformed. <laughs> so if we had the votes, and it was apparent to me and every good progressive that's been watching this issue, if we had the 51 votes, Dominic, and we had the ability to change this, it's not about future shenanigans. It so truly then do you think they not. didn't have the votes? I think there was a deal made. Now, the nature of the deal, the, the horse trading that went on between Mitch McConnell and Harry Reid, two guys that do not like each other very much, to my understanding, I can't tell you what that horse trading was, but I'd like to know what we got you know, in exchange for the Republicans' option and opportunity to obstruct our Senate for another two years. We got callers. Let's get to the phones. Chris, welcome to the Devil's Advocates. Thanks for calling. Hi. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say as far as Harry Reid goes, I think he just answered my question for me, which was, do we have one party or do we have two? I think they're all the same damn party. I really do. <laughs> Chris, I've been saying that for no, years. you sound like Dominic, Chris. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think they are, and I think that one just plays good cop, bad cop, and we it, we keep on going down this road to further right, further right, further right, and our, our, our rights are being closed down. I mean, I was at that solidarity sing-along that you were at today. And um, I go to those, and I personally don't think that um, it's illegal to do what we're doing uh, as far as getting a permit is concerned. If we were to get a permit, that would take the whole point of it away. I mean, if you look at the Constitution of, of the state of Wisconsin, okay, if you look at Article 1, Section 4, it reads, the right of the people to assemble, to consult for the common good, to petition the government, any department thereof, shall never be abridged. Never is the word. We don't need a permit. Our Constitution gives us a permit. There you go, Sister Chris. Solidarity. Okay. Hey, thanks for the call today, Chris. Dominic, I think a lot of progressives and a lot of, you know, hopefully free thinkers, people, you're intellectual independent, so you claim, <laughs> do, do you not agree with Chris? How can you abridge the constitutionality of the right of Wisconsinites to <laughs> assemble in our house? No, it ain't absolutely. private property. It's not Scott Walker's house. It's my freaking house, Dominic. Okay, but, but let's take that a step further. And I do agree with Chris, and that's why we were there singing today with them, and at least some of the songs for me. But, okay, can we go there at midnight at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning and do it? I mean, they lock the doors at some point, don't they? I mean, obviously there is times where these rights are abridged, and, and we can go to a national level on the gun control. I don't want to, but, you know, it, it's I, I appreciate... No, for many weeks during the Capitol recall, the, the Capitol was not locked. There were people... Camping out? Embedded. It, it, you know, it was Occupy the Capitol, basically, buddy. They, it was in response to that human spirit, that uprising, that Scott Walker and the Fitzgeralds changed the rules of the game so that they could make a lawful, legal, constitutional act illegal under administrative codes in the state of Wisconsin. And then Harry Reid, just to get back on topic here a little bit, and then Harry Reid, you know, gave up what bargaining leverage we have in the U.S. Senate Got another caller holding. Let's get to Greg. Greg, welcome to the show. Hello. Um, yes, I, uh, I, I'm a frequent participant of the sing-along, but I was not there today, so I didn't get a chance to meet you. I'm, I'm the other Greg from the sing-along. You're, you're, you're not stoner, Greg? Uh, I'm not Greg from normal. Uh, <laughs> okay, I fair Greg, enough. And he, I know the other Greg, and he's a great guy. He is a great any, guy. He, yeah. Anyway, I want to clarify a couple things that you guys were talking about, the permits. Um, one thing that that the attorneys that are working with us have made clear is that the state does have a right, according to the United States Supreme Court, to require some type of permit if they if they wish to do that. But it but it, it it's a pretty narrow set of restrictions that they can make, and there has to be a compelling interest for the government, and it has to be content neutral, meaning they can't just apply it to to the people that they disagree with. So, so in theory, it, it's true that the uh, Department of Administration can require a permit, and that's probably not going to change anytime soon if anybody challenges it, because it would have to go all the way to the Supreme Court. But what a lot of the people who participate in the sing-along feel is that the rules that they established in December of 2011 are, are outside the boundary of that, because it gets a little technical, but the administrative code 
uh, the state administrative code, that has been around since the 1970s. Uh, Chief Irwin is correct when he says that, but what he, I think, deliberately fails to mention is that the code itself authorizes the DOA to make the rules, which are separate. And those Greg, are the, have you been cited up there at the Capitol? I have been, yes. And and are are you actively being prosecuted, or has your citation been dismissed? Oh, uh, at this point, there's there are four of them. They're they're active. One of them, the uh, state has already filed a motion to dismiss, although it hasn't been officially dismissed yet, but it will be. Uh, there, it's pretty likely that two other ones will be dismissed based on some decisions that were made in another case last week. And then there's a final one, which is still active, and we'll have to see how that one goes. And Greg, do you personally draw any distinction between, you know, someone that is singing and someone that is quote unquote leading the activity? We asked the Capitol Police today if that, you know, did they draw a differentiation there? And they weren't very clear in their response to me. Do you see a difference, Greg, between the act of leading the sing-along or the act of participating? Uh, I mean, I don't particularly, but um, but but the, the code itself seems to make a distinction in that regard. Uh, like I said, there's there's some question about whether their application of it is constitutional, but there seems to be, and that's what the judge said in a, in a case last week, is that in order to in order to find somebody uh, for that, they do have to be taking an active role just based on the language in the code, an active role in leading it. And it would make sense because otherwise, Greg, I'm, I'm whoever sorry, whoever attended a rally would need a permit, and you, that's just not practical. That's what we asked today, Greg. Thanks a lot for the call. Thanks for a lot of salient clarifications for us. We got Mike McCabe holding from the Wisconsin Democracy Project. Another very special guest here on the Devil's Advocates. Stick around. We'll have Mike McCabe right after this short break.